I have a quick question for you. If you're doing playback or using backing tracks on stage with your band, what's your plan if something were to go wrong? Someone trips on a cable, your computer falls off the stage, will the show go on? Now what the pros know is they need a backup plan. In fact, they need an automatic backup plan. So they often create what's called redundant playback rigs. Thankfully, because of the Play Audio 1U from iConnectivity, with this one piece of gear, we can do everything we need to have that automatic backup plan. What I wanna show you in this video quickly is how simply we can set up a redundant playback rig using two computers running the same playback session so that we have an automatic backup plan. Let's dive in and talk about how to make this happen. So first thing I wanna show you, I have two Mac minis here um, that are racked up with my Play Audio 1U. Now I've already powered up my Play Audio 1U. Let's turn this around so that you can see this. Uh, I'm just using a uh, IEC cable here, a really solid sturdy connection. There's my power switch. Um, and let's connect our computers, uh, uh, both computer A and computer B to our Play Audio 1U. Now on the back, obviously we've got our XLR cables, which we'll talk about those in a moment, uh, but let's go ahead and get our computers connected for now. So here's computer A, I'm just taking a USB-C cable, we'll connect that. And uh, if I was actually running this to the rack, you know what, let's do this fancy. Let's, let's make this just like we would uh, on the road. We'll just run this through the top here. Uh, out to the other end. So that's gonna be our A computer here in just a second. We'll pop the lid uh, back on our rack so you can see how simple and easy this is to uh, to make this happen, okay? So there's uh, computer A, let's get computer B connected here, all right? We'll do the same thing again. Let's, let's keep this as clean as possible. I know I got a lot of cables going in here to get to my video switcher and get to multiple monitors, but we'll just uh, run this through to the front just like that. There's our B machine, okay? So now let's uh, turn this rig around and let's get our computers connected on the front, right? So here is our B computer. There's our B cable. Let's plug in computer B there and then we can plug in computer A, okay? So now computer A, computer B connected uh, to our Play Audio 1U. Uh, now while we're here, before we get into our actual computer setup and settings, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop on this lid for my strain track because I wanna include my MIDI controller. While we're here, we might as well get this connected so we can just move on. So I'm gonna use this Oakboard Slide Duo here. I'm gonna use one cable. So there's my USB cable. But how in the world am I gonna get this to both of my computers at the same time? Well, here's my connection. Let's plug this into the USB host port on our PA1U. So there's our USB host port. Uh, we'll get this plugged in right on the front here and you'll see this is going to power our, inner, our MIDI controller uh, and it's going to automatically pass MIDI from this MIDI controller to both computer A and then computer B, which is great, okay? So at this point, we've got our MIDI controller connected. We've got our interface connected to both of our computers. Let's talk about audio real quick, and then we'll get our audio routing from both of our machines. I'll show you how simple and easy this is to make this happen. So now on the back of the PA1U, we have those 12 XLR outputs. So we can uh, directly connect XLR cables right out of the back of our interface or a 12 channel XLR uh, loom or snake. And that can plug directly into our front of house console if we happen to be near it, you know, it's sitting on stage or we have a uh, sub snake or a stage snake sitting, you know, maybe next to drums or something. We can connect those 12 outputs directly to that. We've got all of our hardware set up, uh, all of our connections made. Let's move to our computers. Now I'm gonna start on my A machine. There's two specific things I've already downloaded. Oracle for X series, which is the free control software for my connectivity. We'll make some configurations and changes to our interface here in just a moment. This is what it looks like. Um, I'll put the link in the description so you can download this. And then I also have downloaded LifeSign. Now we'll talk about what LifeSign is in a moment, but it's the free uh, plugin from iConnectivity that's gonna allow for our automatic backup plan. That automatic failover uh, for redundancy, that's gonna be the secret sauce here in just a second. But, but check out the link in the description uh, of this video for both of those. Let's jump over to our A machine. Uh, I, again, have Oracle for X-Series loaded up uh, here. Let's set up our MIDI controller first. So we're gonna go to USB host port reservation. I wanna send this down host port one. So in the port reservation section, I'm gonna choose Oakboard Slide Duo, which is the name of my MIDI controller. Uh, and uh, I've got that MIDI mapping uh, set up there. So that means that MIDI controller is gonna show up in both of my DAWs as host one, okay? Now, while we're here, a couple other configurations you're, you're gonna wanna know about. Let's go to the audio tab. Um, uh, we can do a couple different things here. Uh, I, by default, would leave uh, this mode set to headphones, which means our headphone shows up, uh, our headphone output 
on our interface can basically a mix of uh, all of our uh, outputs from our DAW. So you see that there, right? If we go to outputs here, then basically our headphone uh, port becomes outputs 13 and 14. So you can choose, do you need 14 outputs? If, if so, 13 and 14 will come from your headphones. If not, uh, choose headphones. And this is a really great way to like mix things at the venue. Uh, you can actually mute the front of house outputs. As you can see here, they're currently muted right now. Um, and so uh, this is a really great way. This is how I personally use this. Now, you can see all my outputs are muted in Oracle. I wanna go down here to max all levels and just hit that and that's gonna max all my levels out. Uh, you could also do this from the front panel, which is really easy to do. We'll talk about that in a separate video as we dive into the front panel. Final thing I wanna show you here, uh, you may wanna adjust your sample rate of your interface. Uh, I leave mine set to 44.1, uh, but if you needed to change that, you could change that directly in Oracle for X series, okay? A lot of other settings we could do here, things we could configure, but for now we're set. Uh, I could close Oracle if I want to because I no longer need this open on my computer. Now, let's set up our interface on computer A, then computer B, and we'll uh, kind of demo this and take a look at making it happen. So first thing I'm gonna do is set up my interface. So we'll go into preferences. Um, I'm using uh, my DAW of cho choice, which is Ableton Live. You can use whatever DAW you want. But the first thing we need to do is set up our audio output. So I'm gonna go to the audio tab here. I'm gonna go to audio output device, and I'm gonna choose play audio 1U listed here. And I just need to set up my outputs. So I'm gonna do output config. You need to make sure you have uh, access to outputs one all the way through mono output 15. Um, this is how I have mine configured, right? We'll talk about output 15 here in a second. And then uh, sample rate, again, we talked about it, that set in Oracle for X series and then buffer size 32 samples, okay? Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about MIDI. If we go to link tempo and MIDI. Now in your DAW, obviously this is gonna look a little uh, different. But we want to go to the inputs here, and we're looking for host one, which is what we set up our Oakboard slide duo to be, host one there. Uh, I'm going to disable track. I don't need to send that to my tracks, but I do need to remotely control my DAW for my MIDI controller, and that MIDI controller is going to show up in host one, okay? Obviously, a lot more we could talk about with MIDI with this, but this is just going to get us started, okay? Now, while we're here, let me go ahead and show you. Uh, I have pre-mapped my MIDI here, so I have play and stop mapped. I just have one song loaded into this session. Uh, but my MIDI is already set up and ready to go on my DAW. And if we also look at routings, uh, output routings, you can see all my return tracks, which is what I use for outputs, are routed to my interface here, okay? So now let's look at computer B. Um, computer B, identical setup to computer A, okay? So we'll go into preferences, go to audio. We're gonna set this up separately. It's gonna feel like we've got two audio interfaces connected uh, to two separate computers, because that's what we have. Uh, they just happen to be in one chassis, okay? So there's our output config, exactly the same. Buffer, exactly the same. Then let's go to our MIDI setup here. And again, we'll do the same thing here. Play Audio One U, host one. We'll disable track. We'll make sure remote is enabled, okay? And then finally, to show you, over on my B machine, I've got my outputs routed here. I've already done my MIDI mapping, just simply to play and stop for me in this case. Um, but both of those are configured the same. Again, an important uh, kind of thing to mention here, to understand kind of the mindset of what we're doing is basically we have two computers running uh, two separate Ableton sessions. They're identical, but they're two separate Ableton sessions. And both of these computers are seeing the Play Audio 1U as essentially two separate audio interfaces, which is great. And we're using that one MIDI controller to split to both of those. Now, um, we could make this work. We could press play uh, on our MIDI controller and everything would start working. But how do we know uh, how do we switch from computer A to computer B? How do we make it for that automatic backup plan, right? That's where the secret sauce that I mentioned with LifeSign comes in, that plugin. So let's go over to computer A. I'm going to create a audio track here, and I'm going to name this LifeSign, okay? Again, free plugin for my connectivity. Put the link in the uh, description of this. We're going to drag LifeSign into this track. You could see this is just running endlessly. It's a sine wave that is just going to continue to run. Even when Ableton's transport is stopped or your DAW's transport is stopped, it's just going to continue to run and run and run and run. Now, we want to do audio two, and we want to set this to external out, and we're going to choose output 15. That is the secret sauce. That is the thing that is going to magically enable this uh, and enable our backup. So we see this is making signal. Let me really quickly show you the front of the PA1U here so you can see this. You'll see it's flashing, blinking green, kind of hard to see. We get this little shield icon that basically says, okay, you're protected, you're safe, 
if something were to happen to computer A, it would automatically fail over to computer B like that. Okay, so that's kind of what we, we have happening. Okay, so let me go uh, take us back to scene A. Okay, so let's actually demo this. What I'm gonna do on my MIDI controller, double click stop to make sure that uh, both my Ableton sessions are stopped and they are synced up. Uh, and then let's press play on our MIDI controller here. That's gonna start both session A, session B, perfectly in sync, running in time. You visually can see that both of these are running, uh, or you can at least see A, we're on scene A. We see our levels here. What happens though, if we were to accidentally lose that cable, you can see we switch over to B and our signal is still running and everything's functionally fine. If I actually jump you to the B computer, you see that the B computer is, uh, is continuing to run. You see we're continuing to meter and you see we get a big failure message over on computer A. So then the beauty of this is the show can go on. Um, this switch happens automatically. No one in the audience can hear the switch happen. Even the band in their in-ears can't hear this switch happen because it's instantaneous and happens right away. Uh, and then when we have a, a down moment in the show or a, a moment in the show, if we want to get back to our A computer, it's real simple just to simply uh, get our cable plugged back in here. And then uh, when we have everything synced back up and kind of ready to go, like I'll jump over to my A computer, make sure we have that set. I can hit our scene button to go back to A, uh, and then I could you know, reselect my audio interface if I wanted to, uh, and we'd be off and ready to go and be back to kind of where we need to be to do the rest of the show and have a backup. So if you want an automatic backup plan just like the pros use, make sure to check out the Play Audio One U and set it up with your DAW so that you can have a true automatic backup redundant playback system. Now, if you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video, make sure to click the link in the description of this video to check out our support center and our support team will be more than happy to help and answer and solve uh, any of your questions. But most importantly, thanks so much for watching this video. We hope to see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.